A lot of people went a little bit crazy over the summer as they waited to go back to work. I was doing my show. I wasn't getting my hair cut. And as it got longer, I realized there was one thing I was aiming for, which was to have your hair from Pretty in Pink. Boy, you set the bar pretty low, didn't you? I, with this, as it got longer, and I feel like, be honest, I think I did pretty good in the end. I, I think it looks like, I mean, okay. I mean, it's not a, it looks a little bit, as it looks as much like Steve Bannon uh-huh. as it looks That's, like um, me there. It's really hurtful what you just said. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will say, yeah, I mean, certainly I have a higher hairline than you were rocking in the 80s. Did, were you, uh, when you were playing Steph, did you know how iconic a look this was going to be? I, had, I, I, I still don't think it is, really. Yeah. I would argue this is, and you've, you've played some really good villains. I mean, you played Ultron. And yet I still think Steph is the most villainous person you've ever played. He's a sort of a <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> yes. I, the suit, they nailed the suit. I mean, my hair let me down, but come on, give it up for my wardrobe department. I thought that the most interesting thing about, or the really the interesting thing about him was he, he seemed like he was 10 years too old to be hanging around a high school. He did seem I mean, a little. It seemed like maybe he graduated or dropped out years ago. Well, that was a thing. Which I had. <laughs> <laughs> right. When I was doing, when I was aiming for Steph, I sort of realized it had been a long time since I'd seen Pretty in Pink. And then I realized, I think in my head, I thought the same thing looking at the photo. I'm like, this can't be a high schooler. We can't be meant to believe it's that. It's not really. Yeah. I don't think it is. I mean, I said to John Hughes, who had written it, I said, I'm just playing it like he's just hanging around. <laughs> um, you guys did a really cool thing uh, because, you know, again, tough circumstance. You had to shut down. Um, can you explain the decision to make? Like, basically, the, the show became, there was an animated ele- element to the blacklist. We had shot a third, close to a half of the, uh, episode 19, I guess. Mm-hmm. And we, we, you know, we didn't have anything to do with the footage. I mean, and we weren't going to be able to end the series. Our series is serialized. And... Uh, we had left some things hanging in an unfortunate way um, if we just stopped. And we wanted a way to also not only give our audience, who has been so incredibly faithful to us and still continued to be curious after many years, so we felt we should give them some sort of satisfaction for for the end of the season and then uh, also to be able to lead into the next season effectively. Yet we had no way to shoot, to film. Uh, But there had been a comic book, which I haven't seen. I've seen imagery from it, but there had been a sort of comic that had been made or a graphic novel Graphic novel, right. Um, and so, and our show is a sort of comic. I mean, it really, it's not this world at all. It's a sort of parallel universe, you know. Um, and it has a lot of the sort of, I think, sort of comic tropes, you know. Sure. Um, so we thought it might be sort of fitting. And it just so happened that um, somebody in our production, might have been John Eisendrath or something, had a friend or a relative or something that worked at an animation house that did a lot of pre-visual stuff for films and and so on. And, you know, to really do it, you know, you would want to give someone, you know, half a year, I mean, months really to do it. But they could, they were able to be able to, to do a sort of an animation that was more like sort of a moving graphic novel. And, and, and so we decided to finish the episode and sort of tweak it in a way that would allow for the season to end in some fashion um, and to kick us into the beginning of the next season th- this year. And the one collateral effect of it was that we had these episodes that were <laughs> the sort of climactic end of season seven uh, that were now going to be the beginning of eight. 
So the, so the season eight really kicked off <laughs> right. with a lot of like dire circumstances and still continue to be very dire. I mean, you saw the clip that we showed. That was pretty much all we could show of this episode that's airing without, uh, you know, either giving something away or sort of, you know, or it would just be confusing because you're right in the middle of something very sort of dramatic. Or... Uh, well, it's a, it's a very uh, nice to have the show back. It's very impressive uh, what you all managed to pull off. And uh, thank you so much for making the time. And thanks for being here in person. Thank you. This is, I think, your 10th time here. This is a big deal for It me. is? Yeah. Well, it's, every one of them has been a pleasure. Well, let's keep the streak going. The Blacklist airs Friday nights at 8 p.m. here on NBC.